Welcome again to Highly Questionable. What do you like on the show today, Bomani? Did Tyra Lou break bad with LeBron? Yeah, maybe he did. Vamos, Papi. Time to entertain America! Wow, it's very angry. Did the Warriors erase all doubt? Not all doubt, because some of us are always going to be inclined to doubt at some point. But in the history of sports, there haven't been many teams with this resume that have earned you doubting it less. And then what you have happened last night is Kevin Durant keeps it closed for the first half, and Steph Curry goes crazy. He scores 15 points in 90 seconds, and Steve Kerr afterward is shrugging his shoulders and saying, nothing changed, that's just Steph being Steph. Sometimes he's going to do that. You shouldn't doubt this team. They're playing a really good opponent, but they're better than that opponent. Yeah, but there was reason to doubt coming out of game one, which was Steph Curry didn't look so good, and a lot of people who were at the game were saying he didn't look to be that explosive, or relatively speaking, that explosive right coming off of the knee injury so there was reason to doubt them does this erase the doubts of course not who thought that the thunder were going to sweep them i certainly didn't we saw the spurs spank the thunder in game one of that series well we have it's going back to oklahoma city with a split the hardest thing to remember in these series often for us is momentum doesn't really exist it's one to one with a new game starting that doesn't have that much to do with the last ones so siren jeff hornacek Mansfield Jackson is on his way out. Oh, what a surprise. The Knicks hired Jeff Hornacek. A hire, honestly, I don't think anybody actually knows what to do with. I think we'd all agree, probably a better option than Kurt Rambis because we have seen Jeff Hornacek do this job well before. Just the last time we saw him do it, it didn't go so well, but they also had him out there trying to run three little bitty point guards at the same time. Is this the end for Phil Jackson, though? I wouldn't go that far. He did at a point say that as long as it was a team-based approach, it didn't necessarily have to be the triangle. I just don't. Jeff Hornacek? Who saw that come? I think, though, Bomani, if it's the end of the triangle, and it seems like it is the end of the triangle offense because Hornacek doesn't have any experience with the triangle, doesn't teach it, and this hiring signals the fact that the triangle is not going to be something that they're doing. They just went with a coach, ostensibly, who is really good at developing three-point shooters. His teams in Phoenix always had a lot of three-point shots. This seems to be a move away from just about everything that Phil Jackson believes in. So, yes, I'd make the leap from there that this is going in another direction eventually. Yeah. Here's the only thing, though. What's Phil going to do? Leave New York after next year and go to L.A.? They've got the coach he wanted, Luke Walton. But guess what he's not about to be doing? Running no damn triangle. Leave New York? Are you kidding me? Do you think that Phil is in New York? Yeah, I mean, he's right. <laughs> oh, about man. That. He's yeah. someplace yeah. else. He's you know, on an island. He's piña colada. Right. You know, Margaritas. <laughs> right. He's or so he's cool. just like in the Great Plains yeah. because that's where that man goes to vacation. <laughs> I mean, he just went like this. He's like, hire whoever you guys want. Stop calling me. You're interrupting my frozen drink experience. Is it really news that Tyrone Lou once told LeBron to shut the bleep up in a huddle? Okay, this is from Ken Berger of CBS Sports, and it is news if this is true. I don't believe that it's true. Do you believe that it's true? I believe that someone fed a story to Ken Berger of CBS Sports that maybe they think is true or maybe frames this discussion in a way that will make other people look good, but I don't believe for a second that anyone told LeBron James in that organization to shut the bleep up, maybe quiet down, Maybe something more gentle than that. I don't believe this story. I don't know, though. I always tell you, man, them little 5'11", 6-foot types, man, they always trying to prove something to somebody. And being the coach of this team involved proving yourself to LeBron James. So I believe that it happened. Here's my question. Why are people so excited of the idea of somebody saying this to LeBron James? Like, why do you, the public, get off so much on the idea of somebody checking LeBron? LeBron managed to get himself a significant amount of power. He uses it when he wants to. Why do you resent that? You should aspire to having that. Well, you see, the front office is trying to tell everybody that Tyron Lewis is in charge. That he's the guy making all the decisions, which is a big job. We know what the guy is doing. Just standing there, you know, LeBron is calling all the shots, so... You know, I mean, I, they did need to put this story out after that video came out where they were using Tyron Lue as a towel rack, right? They had to put out a story like this. Should Patrick Willis' success in Silicon Valley encourage other NFL players to retire early? Really interesting story at Mashable about Patrick uh, Willis, who's now working at a firm in Silicon Valley. Like, he quit, retired football, age of 30, injuries, too much. This is what he wound up doing. It's a great story that goes well beyond the NFL part. I mean, this is the dude from a town in Tennessee who picked cotton growing up, had to begin to take care of his family in his late teens, got to college, and became the kind of story the NCAA should love because he caught up to where he needed to be and is now at that point that he's reached right now. Here's the thing. 
Just because Patrick Willis can decide I'm going to go to Silicon Valley doesn't mean that everybody can make that decision. So it should be encouraging if you have some of the skills that he has. You got to make sure those guys have those skills, though. It is pretty nice, though, for someone to lead the path on this one. I will use my body for a little bit, and then I will use my mind. I will use my mind when I can still use my mind because it has not been destroyed by the things that my body was doing. I will get the money from using my body that way and then aspire to something different with that money. It's a path that he's not even the only one in that 49er huddle who has chosen to take. And I got to think that if they influence each other, they can also influence others. Hey, listen, Miami is not Silicon Valley, but we have a lot of uh, startup here, so you can make a lot of money. There are a lot of clinics, you know, and a lot of other stuff. You know, you have labs and all that good stuff. Yeah, this is not Silicon Valley. It's more like Silicon Valley. That's how you know the difference between the two words. You know what I mean? It's Silicon, Silicon. What should we make of this post saying nine in ten Native Americans are not offended by the Washington football team name? I was surprised that it was this high, nine out of ten. But I ask you this question, I imagine you too may have been surprised it was that high. What about the one? Because we don't have any other sports nicknames that we'd be okay with offending the one black person in 10 or the one Hispanic person in 10. There's no reason to have a nickname that offends one in 10 when you're talking about sports. But I was surprised this number was as high as it was. I'll tell you this, though. It's worth noting that people that are pushing this Washington Post poll the hardest would ignore other polls that would give you results that were different from this one. Like, this is just being wielded as a weapon. Now, what's that weapon? being wielded for well you may have heard but the team wants a new stadium there's been some questions about getting that stadium in the district the previous mayor of washington was like no not with that name the current mayor not so strident about that issue and right after this poll went up you had a story in the washington post about how this might change things about the stadium i wondered at 1108 what the stadium had to do with this <laughs> the post put something up literally at 1109 do you know what else nine out of ten people agree on? Dan Snyder is a big loser. Wow. Okay, that was very strong. Okay. But. He's a legend at the bank, though. Like, we got to talk about what kind of loser we mean here. Coming up next on my Son's TV show, we talk to Chris Harris Jr. Go ahead, Poppy. Show him your Peyton Manning impersonation. <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty good, right? It's pretty good. It's, uh, <laughs> yes. You know, at the beach today is Chris Harris Jr. Hey, Super Bowl champion with the Denver Broncos. He'll be hosting his second annual free Underdog Academy football camp at Bixby High School in Bixby, Oklahoma, which will focus on football fundamentals as well as role modeling and leadership. Let's get to know him a little. How was your draft day experience, right? Because you ended up signing. Yeah. What did you end up signing for? Like $2,000? Do I have that right? Yeah. Yeah, $2,000. Uh, I definitely uh, just going undrafted, and then we had the lockout, sit, having to sit out that whole time, uh, not knowing what teams you're going to go to, uh, not being able to communicate with the NFL, and then also having everybody – telling you you weren't going to make it and just give up on your dream. So um, I signed the lowest signing bonus with the Broncos that year and, uh, being, and, and was the only undrafted player to make the team. Chris, do you have a good story for us going through the $2,000 bonus, like where it is that you had yeah. to be really careful because you weren't sure whether you were going to make the team or mm -hmm. not? Where, can you give us some examples of you having to be really yeah. careful with your money during that time? I can remember the only thing that I had bought was uh, a PlayStation 4. That's the only thing I had bought. And I always used to take tons of food home from the facility to make sure I never had to spend any money. So the only thing I had bought at that time with that $2,000 was, was a game system. So basically, you were doing nothing but dining at the facility, right? Like you were just going and yeah. eating all of their food. You were never going even to lunch. You weren't doing anything. You were just eating their food, staying at their place. Man, I used to take home three uh, plastic uh, to-go plates every day just to make sure I had enough food and fill my backpack full of Gatorade and water. So I was always, I made sure that I was straight every day. Hold on, were you trying to be smooth about it, like trying to come in and be proud at first and then you broke <laughs> down, or did you walk in the first day with the Tupperware in the tent pool? Yeah. The first day, I mean, I just, they said we could take as much as you want, so I, I kind of, uh, Use that to my advantage and uh, took advantage every day. 
every one of the Broncos we've had on here say the guys not to be trifled with are Talib and Wolf. Do you have a good story about yeah. Wolf for us? Give us give us a story yeah. about Wolf that uh, would uh, properly explain his menace. Yeah, y'all probably y'all probably already heard this, but Wolf's out there telling quarterbacks, "I'll eat your children, I'll eat your family, all that." So <laughs> Wolf is pretty crazy, and uh, so you 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 got to have guys like that. You want to have guys that are pretty nasty, pretty crazy on the field because they kind of strike that fear into other teams. No, no, he wants Wolf stories. You play corner, you went to Kansas. Same with Talib yeah. on all of those. The Talib oh, stories the have got to be the good. Stories are probably yeah. pretty good too. I would say the funniest uh, Tlaib story I've had was in college. Uh, we are playing Missouri. Uh, I was a true freshman, and uh, I was starting opposite Tlaib. He was an uh, All-American. We were playing Missouri. They had their whole, their whole team on the 50-yard line, and Tlaib just, like, ran through their whole team, and they were warming up, running plays, and he, like, they had to, they had to get the cops to come drag him off their, off their side of the field of the warm-ups back in the tunnel. So that was... I was like, man, I, that was probably one of the craziest times I've seen Tlaib right there. The police had to go get him. They didn't shoo him off the sidelines. Somebody had to go send the police for Tlaib. I mean, as soon as he came in the middle of their, their offense and tried to, um, it was messing their rhythm up, all the cops just like ran over there as fast as they could to break it up. So it was pretty funny. Were you on the Kansas football team that lost the fight to the basketball Morris twins. Were you on that? Uh, were you on that twin? Uh, on no, that team? we definitely, uh, we definitely won that fight. I was definitely. Oh, you won it. You uh, won, won it because we, yeah, we, we hear the other that. way. We hear the other way. <laughs> no. the Morris twins say you guys did not. They, the Morris twins say they were back to back. They were fighting you guys over the over someone who was on the track team. What details can you give us about that fight? Yeah. Nah, man. I mean that story right there. I think it was over one of the little track girls. But, I mean, we had 300-pound dudes fighting these basketball guys, so um, <laughs> they definitely didn't win. Uh, I, I definitely watched it and seen it with my own eyes, oh, and wow. uh, we okay. definitely won that for sure. Yeah, see, you I love the Morris football. Twins, though. Those are my boys, though. Yeah, I'm saying you can't just football players and basketball players can't ever seem to find peace, though. I seem to always have an all-campus struggle amongst yourselves. Yeah. I mean, at that time, uh, we were actually pretty good at that time, so... Uh, I guess we could say um, they were running the camp as we were too. So, but um, the twins, man, I love the twins. They were always, I mean, you can always see them in some altercations. But uh, everybody had you had to go with your defense, your football guys' backs. And uh, man, we had some big 350-pound D tackles in there fighting. Man, it's not fair to fight a six-foot point guard or six-seven, um, six-nine power forward. So, I mean, I think we had we had a little advantage. I hope both will uh, buy you a new car. Oh, Osweiler. <laughs> yeah, Osweiler needs to buy you a new car. The whole defense. Poppy, he needs to buy the whole defense. <laughs> Poppy, are you ready? Go ahead. Ask him what you got for him. Yeah, Chris, what is the funniest thing you have seen in a Bronco locker room? Uh-oh. Ooh, the funniest thing I've seen in the Broncos locker room. When everybody tries to freestyle, man, I think that's always funny. Everybody, they always put a beat on or something, and... Watching Vaughn, Tlaib, uh, Romy, and them all freestyle, man. They all think they're rappers. <laughs> My father wants to do a Peyton Manning impersonation for you. Is that okay with you? Can, can we do it? He's, gonna, he's got a great Peyton Manning impersonation. Go ahead, Poppy. Show him your Peyton Manning impersonation. <laughs> it's pretty good, right? It's pretty good. It's, <laughs> yes, it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's excellent, hey, right? <laughs> yeah, you like that? <laughs> hey, you got Peyton on that one, man. <laughs> See you hey, later. Man, thanks, thank, you, thanks for being on with us. We appreciate it. Oh, yeah, no problem, man. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. That was fun, sir. We appreciate it. Gracias, Chris. Gracias. Oh, yeah, no problem, man. Hey, you got Peyton, man. He might not like that. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you guys a new car, too. Look at the flick of the risk. Look at the flick of the risk. Broadcast from the Clevelander Hotel on beautiful South Beach, Miami. Time to play the game that is filling it today. Do you question? You can give us topics and events, and we question them. Feeling what? Do you question if this is leadership? All right, second quarter last night, Thunder and Warriors. We've got Kevin Durant and we've got Dion Waiters. And thank goodness we have Dion Waiters in the NBA because he allows for moments like these. 
What happened here? Because I saw, oh, he's mad because he didn't get the ball earlier, or? Good shot. He wanted the ball right under the basket. Now he's smiling, he's happy, and yeah, <laughs> right, bleep you, bleep you. Wow. <laughs> The problem is Kevin Durant's one of those dudes where you can't quite tell when he's joking. You know what I mean? Like, right. he might be joking right there. I don't. I, I, I can't tell. I couldn't tell either. That looked like it turned a little bit into a snarl, didn't it? <laughs> no, I cannot tell whether he was mad or not. Here's why I must assume it must be some kind of joking, though. From what we hear, you could ask Kyrie Irving. Deion Waiters ain't just going to take that because you were one of the top pick in the draft. You know what I mean? <laughs> What Look at Kevin Durant trying to pretend he's a tough guy. Oh, <laughs> come, Bobby, on. come on. I mean, yeah. Everybody knows that you're, you are weak. Uh, no, hey, no, hey, no. I feel like this is some skinny man bias. I'll no. cut you, old man. Nobody. What? Do you question this fashion statement? Is this Russell Westbrook? It's got to be. It's got to be, right? Let's see what we've got here. What are you doing, man? Whatever he wants is the answer to your question. Hey, is that a, like, like, a, a, the, the hat? Well, I mean, whatever he wants, whatever he wants. Maybe he need to, like, have a transplant of one of those zippers from off that jacket onto that shirt. Like, the zippers seem unnecessary up there. You need something to enclose yourself. I don't know if he actually gets away with doing some of the things that he does, but no one else in the world could get away with it. That sure looks like my underwear. <laughs> Keep it real, all of us have got one of those. I mean, if we're going to be honest real, about really? it, like, we don't wow. wear it to a press wow, conference. these are uncomfortable you, you, confessions. You have, you have that shirt until somebody throws it away for you. Do you question whether more fights should end like this one? Okay, we are going to Ukraine for the European Championships of Kung Fu. Yes. It's Armenia versus Azerbaijan. Yes. I'm gonna have my dad try to spell that uh, afterward. Hey, who, are, who are we to tell him if he's right or wrong? Is everyone tired? Yeah. They're, oh, oh, yeah! Get them involved. Yeah! I thought it was Kung Fu. It turned into wrestling. Yes! Oh, wow! Yes! Oh, wait. What's that guy throwing? Uh, what was a that? table, I believe. A tiny little table was thrown there. Wow. Of course, the most ironic thing is nobody's doing any kung fu. Wait a minute. Where'd that <laughs> stick come from? Where'd that guy get a stick? Oh, okay, now they're doing kung fu down there on the ground. Okay, there's some kung fu. Wow. Is Clearly, that... we need to watch more kung fu. I ain't know kung fu was still in style, by the way. Oh, this is oh, uh, oh! Who are these people just still hanging around? Papa, you want to try to spell Azerbaijan? You want to try, you want to give it a crack? I want to give it a crack at it. Z Z. Oh, wow. Okay. B. Okay. Y. All right. Um, C H. Uh huh. J E G by Jan. What the hell was I that that happened Jan. at the end? What happened at the end there? Time to play the game that is waiting for you to pop the question. See? Oh, no. Tell us what's on television tonight. We'll tell you if we're intrigued. On the NBC Sports Network, game three of Blues and Sharks. Ah, oh, look. Hockey made the program, Bomani, but not actual hockey action. We're just going to go to some post-game sound of a penguin. How's your breath? It's, it's not good, eh? <laughs> <laughs> no, I meant in terms of conditioning. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, it's fine. I mean, obviously, uh, it's a fast game out there, and, you know, you just catch your breath and go back after it. It's been fun watching you. Keep having fun, <laughs> Phil. <laughs> Thanks, eh? What a, I can't believe that. That's awkward. How's your breath is the question that more interviewers should ask, because I want to see where that ends up and how insecure it makes people feel. Bomani, are you intrigued? Yeah, I'm willing to say I'm intrigued. Uh, I will say, though, that right there was a conversation between two men we need to go ahead and come all home, both of them. <laughs> Poppy, are you intrigued? Oh, see, see, I'm very intrigued. Well, listen, I have a question for you. How is my breath? Oh, God, no. Oh, God. Money. Oh, God, no. Oh, he's making vampire sounds. It's melted the side of my face. He's hissing. He's... When I first started... <laughs> yeah. Once I meet Laura, and I sense that she has a great sense of humor, which I like. I think it's very important when you're out on a challenge like this that you can laugh together. Yeah, I feel that you and me are quite incompatible. 
I agree. Um, I've been doing my best to compromise, even though you maybe not not have noticed. And at some time it comes to a limit. The limit came this morning when you said that you were threatening to kill me. And uh, that was the limit to me. <laughs> I like how that escalated. That was six days later. Six days later and that's how it escalated. Bomani, are you intrigued? So did it happen or not? Like, I think that's the question we all have here. Oh, really? in, the, in these six days, like hopefully before they got too funky for the sake of them both. Papi, are you intrigued? Oh, si, sí, si, sí, I'm very intrigued. But listen, what happened between game one, I mean, day one and day, day <laughs> six, six, you know? Right? Yes. What the hell happened? Yeah. Bomani, I, mean, we tried I, think, to I think he just said, I think Bomani just said, what happened? It's like I'm not here sometimes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like I'm not here. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you for watching. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Gracias. See you mañana. Maybe we should do this show naked, eh? Would that be a different no. take on the show? Yeah, well, I'd certainly not. be afraid. Yeah. Sounds like a bad idea. <laughs>